What's up guys, this is Foedin or FoTK and this is going to be the tutorial on fountain simulation, so the water effects. Um, basically I've got the camera set up here, I deleted the files for the actual water mesh, um, but that's fine, we're going to go and create it again. So basically what you want to do is you want to, I wouldn't worry about the camera and all that just yet, background, sky, lights, um, floor, don't need to worry about any of that, all we need is just our model um, for our fountain. So it's very basic, but obviously the edit will enhance it. Um, and what we want to do is we want to just export that, and so we can put it into RealFlow. So if you come up to plugins, go to RealFlow, and then go to RealFlow SD Exporter. Pop that in, and then choose to save it wherever. I'm just going to save it to the desktop, and just call it that. Make sure the end frame is at 200. Um, a minimum of 200, because that's what RealFlow's default is. Um, and then we'll just go to add all. Um, I'm just going to add this sketch up in. Why is it not doing that? Right, let's give that another go. Just very, very quickly. Plugins, RealFlow, SD Exporter. Oh, it's in there now. Okay. And 200 and export. Oh dear, I think I've broken it. Right, yeah, plugins, that, XD exporter. Call it that for 200 and add all. So remove, add it again. There we go. So now, I don't know what's happened there. I just had a bit of a, a funny moment. Um, I'll keep it open. And now we've got our file on our desktop. We can come to a real flow and start doing the magic. Right, there we go. So you just want to create a new project. So I'll just call this water and then create. And then hold alt and click your mouse, uh, your left button on your mouse. You can rotate. Um, hold alt and click your right mouse button. You can zoom in and out. And your scroll button, uh, well, hold, and, hold alt and scroll button is pan. So alt, holding alt is the key to navigating around this interface. So first of all, we want to import our uh, mesh. So we want to come up to the little yellow cube here, come down to import, and choose our exported mesh, which is .sd. And it comes up as green like this, but I always like to see mine as, you know, like a, a 3D model. So you can just come up to here to this uh, set selected flat shaded button, and it turns it three-dimensional basically, as opposed to lines. And then what we want to do is we just want to create our emitter, which is a circle will do. Go to our move tab and lift it up so we can see it. However, it's pointing in the wrong direction. So what we want to do is we want to go to node up here and you've got rotation. Now, if I remember right, it's, yeah, it's Z, the last one. You just want to turn that to 180 and that should flip it upside down. Um, because obviously the fountain will squirt up and then the gravity will bring it back down. Um, in fountain fashion. So there we go. We're just going to pop this just above the fountain. And um, on the video, you guys obviously, uh, you know, everyone took favor to the second test rather than the first. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And the difference between the two was the first one um, just like came over onto this one and then straight down to the bottom. And the second test, which everyone liked, it filled up this bowl first and then that bowl overloaded into this one. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so if we go to circle now, and go to, where is it? I can't even find, oh, because I'm on SketchUp. Go to circle, sorry, and then it'll be under particles. Sorry, I was just a bit mind boogled then. Um, and we need to do a few settings here. So first of all, you don't want it to be too explosive. Uh, otherwise it will shoot over. So what we want to do is we want to turn our speed in our circle tab down to, I used 1.5 because that, if I just simulate, uh, actually sorry, um, I'll come back to that later. I'll explain it in a bit. Uh, we'll just do the settings first. So the speed goes 1.5 and I'll explain these through when it simulates. And we want our uh, resolution. I just turned mine to about 3. Oops. And then it has a warning down here saying interpolation method 
That's fine, just come down here and just set to local. There we go, and you can turn this viscosity up to about 5, I usually do. Um, and then basically what I'm going to do now is just I'm going to simulate it. Oh no, sorry. That's just going to emit straight up. We didn't have the gravity. So if you come up to the red tab here and just click gravity and that's all good. So I'll just reset that and simulate again. So that is now coming up and you can see the gravity is bringing it back down again. So it's overflowing. And because the speed is so slow at 1.5 you know, it will just drip over instead of shoot over. So then we, you know, it will fill this bowl up first before overflowing into the next bigger base bowl. Um, and you guys seem to like that effect a bit more. So that's what we're going to work with. So anyway, yep, I'm going to just come off that. You can see what's going to happen. It's going to run through. That's all good. Um, and I'm not going to go into more detail about, um, all the different, like, you know, um, buoyancies and uh, you know velocities and all that stuff to make it look more water like this is just going to be a tutorial of what I've shown in the um, in the animation test uh, otherwise you know well it's basically that's another tutorial so uh, we'll, we'll visit that another time um, so yep yeah, now I'm happy with this sort of simulation and then that will eventually just fill up and overflow I can come back to the start come up to the little green tab up here and go to particle mesh and that will basically use our circle as the emitter um, to create, uh, you know, a 3D mesh. So if I now start simulating it, it will be water-like as opposed to just a, you know, a particle structure. So that's all good. So I can now come back to the start. And what I used to do is I come onto the particle mesh and I go to filters and I just click yes. And I'll leave it at that. So there we go guys, I'm now going to simulate it through um, and what I'll do is I'll come back once it's all done. Right guys, so I'm back and it's all done. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Ooh, God. Um, so I can now scroll through and you can see the water simulation. Uh, as you can see, it's obviously still blodgy. Um, but I wasn't going to fix that today as I mentioned earlier. So what we're going to do now is we're going to export that. Um, so we want to come up to export, so export all and then come back into Cinema 4D. Now this is where sort of I'll build it back up again. So I'll just pop my uh, stupid texture on um, and delete the rest. So this is how I built this little scene up. I just added a floor and a background with a just a solid color white. Uh, I didn't go special with this. Um, so you won't need to worry about doing that either. And then go to plugins, real flow, and then you want a real flow mesh importer. Um, and then it'll come up with all these settings. And you go to file path. And then you, if it's standard, if you've re, uh, installed real flow, um, you know, by default, then you, this is where your, all your scenes will be saved to. You come up to C drive. You come to your users. You go to whatever your user is. And, oh, I've got bloody hidden files still on. Um, and then it'll be under scenes. And then my one was water. And then you come up to meshes. And then you have all of these here. All you need to do is just choose the first one and it'll automatically load the rest in. And make sure all these settings are the same as well, like end frame. I set mine to 200, so you know if you're following yours, this should be 200 as well. And we can just scroll through and we've got a nice water simulation here as a 3D mesh in Cinema 4D. And then what I've done is I just added a basic little camera, um, start at naught, keyframe, go towards the end. and do that so now we've got our sort of little pan um, and basically I need a water texture now so if you have a Cinema 4D R13 or plus or R any Cinema 4D but a studio version you can come up to create down here I go to load material preset go to visualize uh, materials and nature nope not nature it's water where's no sorry liquid and I usually choose um, water turbulent. I like that one. Um, and then I just attach that onto the particle mesh. There we go. And if I render this now, it's going to look. Oh, hang on a minute. What's going on here? Let's take these off. It's a horrible kind of 
water looking you know you've got your reflections and that that's fine i usually come in and bring the transparency in a lot more um so you know the water's more see-through as you can see there but it's still a bit too thick so what i did is i cr uh, clicked on the particle mesh right click go to cinema 4d tags and then come no sorry display and then click use next to visibility and i set that to 50 percent basically that's the opacity um so you know i can only see 50 percent of that so if i render that now Was it 50%? Or was it 80%? Because that doesn't look right. There we go. So that's how I create it. I, I, you know, I bring the opacity down just a little bit as well. Um, the only thing, other thing we need is some lighting. So what I did is I grabbed a... Well, I have Grayscale Gorilla which uh, is a Lightroom kit <clears throat> and I'll show you uh, where is it I think I have it okay maybe I don't have it that's fine okay that means I just have to quickly find it um, Cinema 4D does have a built-in lights here we go so you go to broadcast resources and then lights or somewhere here um, Sorry, no, sorry, it's prime light setups, that's it. Um, and I usually just bring a, su uh, a sunlight. Either that or an array light. Um, which one should I use? I'll use the array for this tutorial. And that should be a big old... Is it me or is that a bit too small? Oh, here we go, look. Um, I don't know if you can see well, but... all the Because obviously, these little light markings here they're grey and on the grey background you can't see them but that's fine um, I'll just size that down then as I can now see them to about there and lift them up that's creating nice lighting for our our scene so that will create some nice shadows and then we want to add on our global illumination and ambient occlusion so if I now just render that we'll see what we've got Now this is where it's going to take a bloody long time. Um, now you might be put off just by seeing this guys. Um, however most of the work came into After Effects afterwards. A lot of compositing. So there's colour corrections and all that kind of stuff. Um, so don't be you know, worried that it doesn't look perfect now. That's what post production is for basically. Well this is all post production but you know. If I'm imagining this is, you know, sort of the, the filming type, you know, type stages. Um, Post-production being going into After Effects. Um, that is where it will enhance. So, the, you know, the water's now coming a bit more to life. Um, and obviously, whatever you can, you know, you, the background you can change, the scene you can change. This is just a tutorial purposes. I can't exa remember exactly what I did, but these are along the same lines. But obviously I can see the shadows from the you know I can see the background on the floor which isn't good that's because of the lighting but that can be sorted so there we go guys and then what I'll do is I'll render that out and I'll put it into After Effects and just basically add a magic bullet looks onto it so that is basically how to create this simulation type effect for a fountain and you know just the different settings will make it look different you know um, so you can just have a little play around because that's all it is guys practice I've always said that um, so there we go please like and comment and I'll see you next video Peace.